2024 Papillion City Council meeting order. Ms. Barada, would you please take the roll? Sunday. Here. Mumgard. Gaines. Glover. <coughs> Bansla. Here. Clute. Here. Stubbe. Here. Ingberg. Here. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, liberty and justice for all. Thank you. And do we have an affidavit of publication on file? We do. And a current copy of the Open Meetings Act is posted in the back of the council chambers. We've got a unique special presentation tonight. I'd like to invite Steve Peterson up. I think most everybody knows Steve, longtime Papillion resident, but quiet behind the scenes a lot. So, because he's, he's usually out at one of the lakes fishing, so nobody sees him. But um, he had a unique thing, and I wanted to honor him as a Papillion resident for what he got, but the other one is it happened in Papillion, so I thought a little bit to promote what Papillion has too in an area that people aren't aware of very much, I don't think, or if they're aware of, they don't appreciate. So I want to give first read a proclamation. Whereas Steve Peterson is a hardworking resident of Papillion who has recently achieved the extraordinary accomplishment of earning his sixth Master Angler Award from the State of Nebraska Game and Parks Commission. Whereas Steve has demonstrated exceptional skill and dedication to the sport of fishing, having caught qualifying fish for all six of his Master Angler Awards within the lakes of Papillion, Nebraska, including Portal, Prairie Queen, and Walnut Creek. Whereas Steve's impressive catches include largemouth bass, smallmouth bass, yellow perch, channel catfish, redder, redder sunfish, and hybrid bluegill, each exceeding the minimum trophy size requirements set by the Nebraska Game and Parks Commission. Whereas Steve's achievements highlight the abundant fishing opportunities and natural beauty of Papillion, showcasing the city's commitment to preserving and promoting parks and recreational spaces for its residents. Now, therefore, I, David Black, Mayor of the City of Papillion, do hereby honor Steve Peterson in recognition of his outstanding accomplishments and dedication to the sport of fishing and to the waters of Papillion's recreation areas. Steve, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. And we've, we've got a fairly light agenda tonight, so I'm not going to rush this. I'd like Steve share a little bit because he's got some really unique perspectives. Um, and I think it would make everybody appreciate the asset that we have here. Um, and that's not by accident, um, what we do with parks and rec and water and natural. So I want him to share a bit. And then we get a couple of representatives from Game on Parks maybe share their perspective uh, of what we've got in the partnership and then wrap up with Tony talking about it a little bit as well. Steve. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Black. Um, this is really cool for me. It means a lot. Um, it's a sport that I truly love, probably a little too obsessed with it, but it's something that I think a message needs to get out to the entire community about what Game and Parks, the city of Papillion, and the Papial Natural Resource District has done in this area as it relates to the sport of fishing. Um, I'm very honored um, to be a part of this, um, but I'd like to get that message out because one of the things that I see when I'm out fishing or the one thing that's lacking are, little, are kids. And I'd like to get the kids hooked on fishing because there's so much beauty, whether it's the sunrises or the sunsets or the blue water or the natural aquatic habitat that's there. We really need to get these kids hooked on this. And there's so much potential with these lakes. Um, besides, you know, the other places in the world that I fished, I also watch some of the professional fishing shows and that sort of thing. And I get to see what they're doing for catch rates and what types of fish they catch and that sort of thing. And I've got to tell you, these lakes here in Papillion, whether it be Prairie Queen, or Walnut Creek, or Big Elk, or Portal, or Shadow Lake, or Midland, or even Halleck Park. There's world-class fishing in these lakes. Um, and part of the reason for the master angler is to kind of show um, one of the rules is if you catch the fish, you have to measure it, you have to verify it, and you have to basically download it into the website for the Nebraska Game and Parks. But part of the requirements also are that the fish has to be released. So of the six master anglers that I was awarded, all of those fish are still swimming in the water. 
And what I'm hoping is a couple of them, specifically the smallmouth bass, in another year or two, that fish could be a state record. And then it would go on the record books that Papillion offered some of the best fishing in the state, if not the region. And so when you watch some of the professional fishing shows, you see these fish that they're putting up. And I look back and I put my wife through that misery of watching these shows with me every Saturday morning. And I always have to point out the fish at Portal are that big. The fish at Walnut Creek are this big. People wouldn't believe the real uh, sport fishing that's in these lakes in Papillion. And, you know, it's something that's been 25 years in the making. And I don't know what the budget is for these lakes, but I can tell you this, whatever you spend on the lakes in the Papillion, Sarpy County area, it's money well spent. Again, the, the one thing I'd like to encourage is for everyone here tonight and everyone you know to promote and support Fishing Papillion. And especially uh, the adults too, get the adult, adults to get out there. Go buy your fishing permits. You can get those online too. Get out there and give it a try. You'd be shocked. Um, when I watch these shows on TV, you know, I pay attention. I'm an accountant by trade. So I pay attention to, you know, what kind of catch rates are these professionals getting? And, you know, on a good day, uh, the bass tournaments, at least for the keepers, their catch rate might be two fish an hour. Well, for 2024, the catch rate at Walnut Creek for me was six fish an hour. The catch rate at Prairie Queen was about six fish an hour. But here's the real surprise. The one lake everybody thought had dried up and gone away and didn't exist anymore was Portal. And Portal... 12 fish an hour, or you can check with my wife. We were down there last weekend, and I don't know how many she caught, 30 an hour. And every time we go down there and we're having so much fun catching these fish, the first thing I think of is, man, the kids in the neighborhood would just love this. If we could get the kids in the neighborhoods hooked on coming down here, you don't need a boat. All you need is a bike. All you need is a bike. You need some persistence. Um, you need a little bit of patience and a little bit of peace and, um, you know, maybe some bug spray. That's all you need to be successful fishing these lakes. You know, what I'd like to see these kids do is I'd like to see them out there with the sunrises. I'd like to see them watch the blue waters um, so that they get hooked on it like I have and then they can pass it on and save it for the generations to come long after we're all gone. And the resources, the natural resource that this county and this city has and lakes, I'm not sure there's another one that compares to it in such a small, you know, area. What I'd like to have happen is I'd like to let the kids discover you're never going to have a bad day fishing, you know. Um, Anglers are basically all equal in the eyes of the fish. And the best time to go fishing is whenever you can. So again, I'd like to thank you for this honor. Um, it's really cool. And uh, my last message is go fish Papillion today. Thank you so much. I'd like to invite Game and Parks up. Uh, probably never been here with us before. No, no, I haven't. No, it's 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 great to be here. And Steve, just want to congratulate you on that and thank you for the words. That's you know that's a uh, the message that we're trying to get out throughout the state. Fishing is so good for the mind and the body and the soul. And then especially in these big urban metro areas, having that opportunity to get out and get away from the hustle and bustle and just spend some time. Like Steve said, even if you're not catching fish, it's still a good day on the water. So from a game and park standpoint, we just want to say thanks for the partnership, you know, for the continued partnership that we look forward to. Um, without these partnerships, it's hard as our agency and without the help of the NRDs 
to be able to provide as much opportunity and public access as we can. And so working with you guys, working with the other, the city of Omaha, all of the, all of the other metro areas is great because it helps us <clears throat> reach a much wider audience. And like Steve said, we, we want kids out there fishing, right? We want people to enjoy the things that we enjoy when we're out there and to feel the things that we feel because once you get hooked on it, it's, it's such good therapy for everybody. And so, Steve, just want to say congratulations. Keep at it. And I actually, I think I may have ran out, ran into you out on the water at some point. I I'm almost saw, positive. I wanted to mention, too, one of the Game and Parks conservation officers, Brian Arp. Yep. I get to talk to Brian all the time, and he's a great teacher. And the one thing that Brian always puts, you know, points out is the necessity for good fish and game, wildlife, preservation and protection, and making everybody understand the rules and making them understand how valuable that resource is and why we need to protect it and why, you know, we need more people like Brian Arp yep. and yourself and everybody else that's out there um, that manages the wildlife and the fisheries. But they've done a wonderful job because believe the, the fishing is unbelievable yeah. in this county. It, and, it's, and it's hard to get that message out. We, we struggle too getting that message out that there is quality fishing right in your backyard in Omaha. You don't have to drive to Western no. Nebraska or South Dakota or Kansas. There's quality fishing, especially for the people who put in the time right. and you get to know the lake and you get to know the fish all of that comes together and and the opportunity is here and not just opportunity to catch fish but to catch quality fish so some of the biggest satisfaction i get is being able to show someone else what's in their backyard and one of the individuals that i've been showing that to is our neighbor who's with us dave holloway and uh, dave has you know he's taken off and he's really got the fishing bug now after just showing him a couple of tips and Dave, if you would, I'd like you to say a couple words. Let them know what 2024 well, fishing is like. I, I learned enough about fishing that I wish you all wouldn't tell people about <laughs> lakes because they're really a fishing hole. That's it. That's why I think that's what I think we're going to do. One of the things we're going to do. Um, actually leverage this proclamation and we captured this presentation a little bit I think we're going to do a little bit of a social media series on fish papillion and uh, turn it into an educational series so we've already started talking about maybe doing some of that and leveraging this so again thanks Steve that'd be that'd be great Tony you want to wrap up and share sure. your perspective Mayor council Tony Gallon parks and facilities director it's it's funny you mentioned that Steve about portal lake there's two times during the year, the last two years, my phone at the parks office has rang off the hook. And number one was, when are you gonna put water back in Portal Lake? That was number one. And number two is, when are they putting the trout into Halleck Park Lake? Yeah. Everybody wants to know when they put trout into the lake. But uh, our partnership with not only the NRD, but uh, Nebraska Game of Parks is immeasurable. Uh, without the, uh, the guys and gals at the Game of Parks Commission being able to stock our lakes, uh, and keeping that partnership strong and going, we wouldn't have opportunities like we have right now. Uh, but uh, I'm in a, in a very blessed position uh, working for you all where I can go out in the mornings on the way into work and drive by the lakes when the sun's just coming up, just like you've seen, I'm sure, Steve, on many occasions, and, and know uh, what a great amenity you have uh, in your park and rec areas. Uh, one of the hidden gems, I don't know if it's hidden anymore because a lot of people go down there, the Halleck Park Lake, uh, continually when we have our family fishing nights uh, hosted by the Game of Parks Commission, is pointed out to be one of the best lakes, almost a model for family fishing. Uh, for people who have limited accessibility, who can get right up to a seawall and drop a line in, uh, the little kids who can go out there and fish off the, uh, the little uh, footbridge that's over there. So uh, congratulations, Steve. I'm sure it won't be the last fish you catch in Papillion. So, uh, but I just uh, want to point out that uh, uh, we'll keep the partnership strong on our end with not only the game of Parsh but the NRD as well. So thanks, Steve. Uh, Brandy made me aware of the most recent award, and so you can blame her, but uh, thanks for doing that. I appreciate it a lot, and thanks again, Steve. Thank you. Ms. Powers, Administrator's Report, please. 
Thank you. And I also want to say thank you, or congratulations, Steve. Uh, what an amazing accomplishment and amazing advocate. So thank you very much. And another congratulations is in order. Uh, today was the annual naturalization ceremony, which was held this afternoon in front of the Portal School. Thank you to the Papillion Area Historical Society for again hosting that event this year. We're very proud that it was in Papillion. And a huge congratulations to all the new US citizens. City staff is continuing to work on, with the consultant on possible concepts for the Papio Bay renovation and expansion project. We'll hopefully have some options within the next few weeks to present to, to you guys to get your feedback. And I do apologize, there was supposed to be or we anticipated having um, those committee meetings tonight. We did have to postpone those. We didn't quite have the information ready. Uh, but Robin or, or Taylor will be reaching out to you to reschedule those. So again, I apologize, but we're, we're really excited and proud of what we can present. We'll have that here shortly. And then for the public's information, repaving work and installation of park benches within the city's Arboretum at Halleck Park is beginning at the end of this week. The Arboretum will continue to, to be open to the public, but we do ask that they exercise caution while they're in, in that area since there will be construction going on and this project is anticipated to last about a month or so, weather depending. And then finally, Mark and I will both be in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania for ICMA's annual conference, the 20th to the 25th of this month, which is this Friday to the following Wednesday. Uh, but as always, we'll, we'll always be available by email or um, phone call, cell phone. So please reach out, we can get back to you, you just won't be able to meet in person. So that's all I have, thank you. Thank you very much. Is there a motion to approve the consent agenda? Motion by Councilman Kluke. Second. Second by Councilman Glover. Any proponents or opponents? Council discussion? Please vote. Six yeas, zero nays. Motion passes. Next is item F1, ordinance 2033, an ordinance to amend Papillion Municipal Code section 46.8 to coincide with amendments to Nebraska revised statute 84.14.12. Is there a motion to approve ordinance 2033? Motion by Councilman Sunday. Second. Second by Councilman Stuby. Any discussion? Please vote. Six days, zero nays. Motion passes. Item F2, resolution R24015, it's a public hearing and a vote. A resolution to approve a Class C liquor license for Grace Pizza and Shakes Papillion LLC doing business as Grace Pizza and Shakes, 136 North Jefferson Suite. Uh, suite 101, a manager application for Joseph Gomez. It's a public hearing. I'll open it. Any up, any proponents? I know the applicants here. You want to come up and share anything? If you uh, state your name and address for the record when you come up. Again, we've got a fairly light agenda, so if you want to take a few minutes and just share what you're doing, we'll do. Joseph Gomez, uh, 136 North Jefferson, Suite 101. Um, so I'm actually a Papillion uh, Omaha native, La Vista resident. Um, have been for over a decade. Um, I'm with Grace Pizza and Shakes and one of the partners. Uh, we're based out of Houston, Texas. Uh, my partner, Adrian Hembry, has been a restaurateur for 30 plus years. Done a little bit of everything on the, the restaurant side as well as the food distribution side. Um, we have opened, we have four Grace locations now, three in Houston and one in Florida. And we started looking at other areas of the country to expand to. And I thought, why not my backyard? And so, we, uh, we were able to stumble upon the, uh, the building down here with, with Ben Swan right when he had just purchased it and it was, uh, it was dirt floors. Um, I have a, quite a bit of background in real estate development across the country and scaling businesses. And so when I saw that, the first thing I thought was Grace Pizza. It fits perfect down here. Um, you know, we're a community-based, local-driven product. And so everything we utilize at all of our locations, uh, we try to push as much local as possible. So here in Omaha, we're really looking to, to start and, and kind of cultivate an experience for, for our guests. Um, and like I said, family-based and oriented. So we're really trying to cultivate that experience. Um, you know, with youth sports teams, we do a lot within the community and really hoping to, to kind of drive that here in Papillion. So um, that's really all I got. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Any other proponents or opponents? Close the public hearing. Is there a motion to approve resolution R24-0159? That was a lot of them. Motion by <laughs> Councilwoman Kluke, second by Councilman Ingberg. Um, any discussion? Please vote. Six yeas, zero nays. Motion passes. Congrats. Thank you again.
I forgot to ask, was scheduled open date? Cool. Perfect. Appreciate it. Item F4, Resolution R240160, a public hearing and a vote. A resolution to approve a special use permit to allow body art services as a permitted use on the property legally described as lots 9 and 10, Block 4, South Papillion, excuse me, generally located at 325 South Adams. The applicant is Jennifer Simmons. It's a public hearing. I'll open it to proponents. Is the applicant here? Welcome. Oh, I skipped it. We'll go ahead and do it. If, as, as long as there's no objection from council that I switch the order. I've already read it. We'll go ahead and go okay. with it. All right. Um, my name is Jennifer Simmons. Um, I've been in front of uh, you before about three years ago. Some of you, not all, everybody, but um, I've been tattooing about 16 years. I've been in Shadow Lake for the last three um, I'm looking to move to 325 North Adams be, just to be able to expand and also it's a good location for me. Um, I really like Mr. Gruby. Uh, I trust him. He's, he's a very nice person. So yeah, I, um, I, I like to do a, a boutique art gallery um, tattoo shop, but it will still remain um, as appointment only. So. I don't know if you have any questions, but I'm happy to answer them. Thank you. Do we have Thank any you. other proponents or opponents? Any council? I'll close the public hearing. Is uh, there a motion to approve resolution R240160? Motion. motion by Councilman Ingberg, second. second by Councilman Fanslow. Any discussion? Please vote. Six yeas, zero nays. Thank you. Motion passes. Do you go back to the agenda as it was originally published? F3, Resolution R240159, a public hearing and a vote. A resolution to approve a special use permit to allow a beauty salon at a home-based business home occupation on the property legally described as Lot 195 Eagle Ridge, generally located at 2011 Franklin Drive. The applicant is Nebraska Aguilar, uh, Nebraska Aguilar Salon. It's public hearing. I'll open it. Proponents, welcome. Again, if you state your name and address for the record. Nebraska Aguilar and 2011 Franklin Drive, Papillion, Nebraska, 68133. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Are there any proponents or opponents? I'll close public hearing. Is there a motion to approve resolution R240159? Motion. motion by Councilman Glover. Second. Second by Councilman Fanslow. Any discussion? Please vote. Six days, zero nays. Motion passes. Thank you. F5 was a published item, but it is pulled from the agenda. It'll uh, be, I think, on the August 1st um, item, so we won't take any action on F5, October 1st. Um, F6, resolution R240162, a resolution to amend, to amend the master fee schedule related to water meters, city proper uses, and sewer connection fees. Is there a motion to approve resolution R240162? Motion. motion by Councilman Kluke. Second. Second by Councilman Glover. Any proponents or opponents? Council discussion? Please vote. Six yeas, zero nays. It's all the agenda items. No committees have met. Any comments from the floor? No comments from the floor? Council comments? Just last couple of weeks, uh, United Cities met again, um, just kind of reviewed what came out of the special session, uh, make sure we understand those bills and uh, see if there's anything we want to be doing to get ready for the uh, regular session. And then we, Ms. Powers and I also participated in the League of Municipalities Legislative Committee to look at uh, proposals from cities around the state and maybe what the League of Municipalities will put, wants to put forth as a legislative packet. Um, leadership SARPI under the SARPI chamber uh, has its leadership going and we did a bus tour for those participants, uh, do that every year. Um, thank you to all of the staff, I mean all the council that met with Confluence and uh, Parks and Rec on the city park design. Um, 
the previous discussions, we've gotten real varied inputs, but I think that round of discussion brought everything together. So I really appreciate your uh, participating in that. Um, Nebraska Chamber had an economic development summit in Lincoln that went to. A lot of that's focusing on the governor's initiative that he's calling six regions, one Nebraska, how to do economic development for the state. And uh, the re kind of the metro region um, is kind of trying to prioritize what's important. Obviously, workforce, housing um, is up there, but um, Mr. Sturzma will be representing us on, on a lot of that. Um, we had a number of ribbon cuttings. Thank you to those that participated in that. Um, Sunday morning, we had the salute to uh, public safety, which is a recognition, again, of public safety related to 9-11, so appreciated that. And then uh, Ms. Powers already mentioned the naturalization ceremony today. That's uh, become a great tradition that we do. Just over the next month, uh, just a couple of reminders. I've mentioned it before at the library. On the 21st, they've got a book festival and an author expo down. Um, be good to participate in. And on the 26th at the landing, they've got a book festival with a, or an author event with the New York Times bestseller. Um, so um, there'll be good ones on the 29th. Con Sumter's kind of wrapping up. Uh, there's a free concert. I'm going to assume it's probably one of the last ones on the 29th. And then um, October 6th, the Mayor's Youth Council is having, I think it's the third annual Hispanic Heritage event at the Plaza. Um, so look forward to supporting that. And then on the 18th, uh, the landing will be doing another Friday Night Bites uh, community event out there. So uh, summer's winding down, but there's still some things going on over the next month. Any other council discussion? If not, is there a motion to adjourn? No. No. Motion by Councilman Glover. Second. Second by Councilman Sunday. Please vote. Six days, zero nays. We are adjourned.